Hi there, my name's Anthony and I'm the Consultant Engineer for Education in the EMEA region here at Jamf. And today we're going to have a look at identity in Jamf School and making the most of your identity provider, whether that's Microsoft, Google and any one of the other providers that you might be using. So let's first have a look at identity in Jamf School in general. Why might we need identity or that concept of identity in Jamf School? Why, why might we want it? There's a whole host of reasons why this might be the case. Maybe it's when you're enrolling devices. If you have a one-to-one -one scheme, it's going to be really easy for you to use that identity to tie to a device. So when it comes to management, it's easy to be able to identify who it is. So through a user assignment, and then maybe build up some smart groups and some variables in order to create a zero touch workflow. You know, if you know that student is in year nine versus year seven, they might have some different configurations and applications, for example. Um, so there's plenty of reasons why to need it from a, a management point of view. Uh, and also uh, classes. So if you're using Apple Classroom or Jump for Teacher, that relies a lot on the iPad itself having a user assignment or an identity in order to make that to work. So it's quite fundamental when it comes to managing devices and it's why it's such a big um, a big thing that we need to speak about because in Jamf School we do do things a little bit differently. So there are three ways that we can get uh, identity into Jamf School. Um, the first one is we can simply import into Jamf School and what I mean by that is that we can import from CSV files um, so we can create our own sort of internal directory within um, within Jamf School, but also when we do uh, link up with things like School Manager or an LDAP or Google, etc., uh, we also import into Jamf School at that point as well. Okay, so it's um, it's something we'll talk about quite a bit uh, today. Other than that, we have two other functionalities: we have authentication and synchronization. And it's worth understanding what each one of them do and how we should use these within Jamf School. So let's first talk about authentication. So the authentication part of Jamf School does a live check on credentials. So if the user, for example, were to enroll an iPad and you had a particular setup that required the user to enter their username and password, and you've linked this up, say, with your Azure, um, they would go away and put their username and password in and it would do that live check. So whatever their current password is would be the password that they would enroll with. And then that would allow the iPad to enroll, etc. Now, authentication as a general rule of thumb doesn't add the user to Jamf School's internal directory unless you configure it that way. Now, that means until the device has been enrolled, Jamf School has no information about what groups that user is in, um, you know, what, what um, year group they might be in, what configuration they need, which means that I can't pre-build smart groups, um, which can give me that configuration based on my year group or who I am, for example, which means that as a user, I'm probably going to have to enroll the device um, and then wait for somebody to realize that it has been enrolled to get my specific um, configurations or applications based on my year group. So authentication is great for keeping those passwords in sync for enrollment um, so that I'm enrolling with the latest uh, and greatest password for my Azure or Google. Um, but from a management side of things, it's kind of lacking the information that I need. Then we have synchronization. Now, this is kind of the flip of the coin, right? It imports the data on a sync and it does add the users and it does add the user groups from whatever destination I'm syncing from. So whether that's a local LDAP, whether that's your Azure, whether that's Google, any of that kind of infrastructure that you've got back there in terms, in terms of group memberships and how all that's laid out, that will sync across uh, when you use the synchronization functionality. And that's great because it does mean that I can use smart group, or smart group automation based on year groups and users and whether they're a teacher or a student and all that kind of good stuff. But it has no correlation at all to do with passwords. Um, so although it imports the user and adds the user to Jamf School, there's no password data there. So without the authentication piece, we have users and users that can't enroll devices using usernames and passwords. 
So let's just take a look at what that looks like uh, in this, this table here. So as you can see with authentication, I've got some green light, red light, and we've got some orange as well, right? Um, so with authentication, we get the, the green lights on password sync and sort of user import. And with synchronization, we don't get the password sync, but we do get, in, uh, we import the user, we have the group. And I've got an orange there when it comes to class data because it's very easy to change a group into a class. Um, but what you'll start to see as we build this picture up is that actually it's better with both authentication and synchronization configured in Jam School. For me, when you would normally link up to a, an LDAP service or a cloud identity provider, most other systems will give you both of these functionalities um, within one kind of configuration, whereas in Jam School we split them out. And there are some good reasons for that, which we'll get into a little bit later as well. So essentially, this is what a possible configuration could look, la look like. We have uh, our LDAP server or, or identity provider there on the left, and we have our Jamf school server there on the right. And we will do the synchronization. And at the point of synchronization, we have uh, imported the uh, users and the groups. Uh, and then we set up authentication, which means we've got that live link with the password. And with all of that information, it means that we can pre-build smart groups and create those zero touch workflows. OK, so with both of them, we get that full rounded solution that we need. Now, there's a couple of things to just watch out for here. In Jamf School, in the settings tab, when it comes to authentication, we can authenticate with a number of different providers. So we have its own local Jamf School directory. If you want to just manage absolutely everything within Jamf School itself, you can. We, of course, work with Azure and Google, which will be the two big ones there, and uh, on-site LDAPs as well. So authentication, we have a lot of options as to where we can sync or keep um, the live password link up and running there. When it comes to synchronization, though, there's only two options, and that's LDAP and the SOM today, which is a, a, an MIS system. Um, gone are uh, Azure and Google, for example. Now, that's not to say that we can't synchronize with them because we absolutely can, along with any other cloud identity provider that works with an LDAP protocol. The thing that I just want to point out to you today, and it's a warning, is that although you can connect to services like Azure and Google uh, with the LDAP um, protocol, please be aware that that might not be included in your standard license uh, package from those providers. So although we can do it, um, you'd need to check your licensing out with those guys, but if you have the right kind of licensing, you can, of course, connect to them using the LDAP protocol there. Now, of course, when it comes to Apple devices and, um, and uh, Apple in general, we also have another uh, sort of identity provider, if you like, that we can link in with, and of course, that's Apple School Manager. So what's the possible configuration that we could have with Apple School Manager? Let's take out the, out of the equation completely, the likes of our Google and Azure for the time being. Let's just assume that all we've got is Apple School Manager and Jamf School. So we have Apple School Manager that does a synchronization into Jamf School. The kind of information that we import are the users and the class data if you've configured it already in Apple School Manager. And of course, the beauty here is we get a managed Apple ID and some iCloud storage that's attached to this user when we sync from Apple School Manager. However, there is a problem because much like when we sync from another source, if the user was to try and uh, authenticate as part of enrollment, we don't have a link in there with the password. We are just importing the user. and There's no link with passwords. Now, we do have a feature within Jamf School that bypasses this. But even if you were to use that so that the password sync or, or password connection wasn't a problem, we still have some other problems in that we still don't know what user groups people are in. Uh, we, we might have class details, but that's not the same as a user group um, I, that we can build then automated smart groups with for devices so that when a student enrolls a device, it automatically gets the configuration that it needs based on the user's year group or you know lessons that they have, etc. So it still isn't a one solution to, to get all to, to cover all of your options here. Now, one thing that we just need to watch out for is that many people then say, well, hang on a second, because we can federate our Apple School Manager 
and Azure together. And surely if I do that, when I sync the data, uh, I'll get all the other information that I need from Azure because in Azure, I have all of the group data and the details that we were discussing before. So what happens when we get a sync? Well, we sync the user and the class data like before. We get attached a managed Apple ID, uh, but we still don't have the group information, which means that we still can't really effectively build those automated device groups either for that zero touch deployment workflow that we're, we're after. And of course, there is still no password sync with Apple School Manager. Okay, so again, let's start to build up this picture. With Apple School Manager, we can add users and managed Apple IDs along with class information if it's been configured in Apple School Manager. Problems are there's no password syncing or live link, there's no group information, and that makes it harder for us to build smart groups or pre-build smart groups that are kind of effective, that will give one user something different than the next based on their year group or, or lessons. So let's pop this back into the table as well. And again, you can see we have the lower half of this table um, with, green, with green lights rather than the top half now. So again, the picture that I'm building here is maybe the best thing that we can do is to configure the authentication. So that's our live password links with Azure and Google uh, and the like. Synchronize those users in to get the group so we can pre-build things and then also attach the class information and managed Apple ID information from Apple School Manager to get that real full benefit out of absolutely everything that we can here in Jamf School when it comes to identity. So what might that um, possible configuration look like? So I've created that synchronization with my maybe on-site local LDAP. And then I also sync in School Manager, which has been federated with Azure because that happens a lot. So we'll absolutely make sure that happens. So when we hit sync on both of these, this is kind of what happens as default. We actually get two users, okay? We'll get, say, my name, so I get synced from my LDAP, so Anthony appears. And then there's an Anthony user also in School Manager, and that will appear as well when we sync from School Manager. Now, as far as we're concerned, it's the same user, but like I say, Jump School will import one user from your LDAP with all the um, group information and one from your uh, Apple School Manager with your class and ma managed Apple ID information. So we need to be careful when we do a sync from um, sources that will import users at the same time. So let's just go over this again. So this time we have maybe a local LDAP, we have School Manager that's federated with Azure, and then we're going to authenticate against Azure as well. So we'll do a sync. And of course we get the uh, user and group information added. That's great for building up um, our smart groups so that we can create that zero trust, uh, uh, sorry, zero, uh, zero touch enrollment, um, which allows us to just hand devices out and people can authenticate against them and get the right configurations. We will then sync from uh, School Manager, but we want to make sure that we have the match settings. Now, this is the key. When it matches, it augments that user and adds that class data and managed Apple ID data to the user that's been synced from our LDAP, which means now I have a user that has uh, been imported, has group information as well as class information. Okay, now that's really, really important. All that information there allows us to have um, quite easily uh, configure a pre-configured device enrollment uh, and zero touch workflow with our automated smart groups, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we set authentication up with Azure, as well as having School Manager federated with Azure, we've got that real sort of nice rounded best of all worlds uh, kind of uh, setup here with Jump School. So if this was our possible configuration, this is how you'd do it. What, what does this actually give us? Well, the result is on enrolling a device, you'll get one set of credentials, which in this case is Azure, okay? Because you need your Azure credentials to enroll your device and you need your Azure credentials to sign into your Apple ID. So you get iCloud storage out of this as well. Of course, we can use Apple Classroom and Jamf Teacher, but the beauty for IT managers is they manage one directory 
Okay, so that's their Azure directory. They haven't then got to recreate a whole load of stuff in Jamf School and School Manager, et cetera, et cetera. It's just one directory. So it's much easier for people to manage. Now, that being said, and I've mentioned this a few times, Jamf School does have a local directory that everything imports to. And we can also import other data into there using CSVs, for example. So let's just have a look at our um, table again. And this time we'll add the CSV import to this as well. And as you'll see, other than just the managed Apple ID, um, we can actually do quite a lot of this stuff with just the Jamf Schools internal directory. So just because you can connect to Azure or Google, you know, you don't really need to um, if that's a bit complex for your needs. You can absolutely manage everything you need within Jamf School on its own. Um, but as you can see here, we can import users, groups, we can do classes, we can even set passwords this way as well. Um, but we still might want to use this not just as an alternative, but as an addition to everything else that we've already set up. Now, why that might that be the case? So here's, a, uh, here's the ultimate configuration, another possibility. So this time we've got our, we're going to synchronize from our LDAP service, whether that's again a cloud provider or not. We're going to authenticate with Azure. We're going to import users from School Manager that's federated with Azure. And we're also going to use CSVs to import additional users. So let's go through this uh, as we have uh, before. We're going to do a sync from our LDAP service, which will bring us our users and groups. We're then going to import additional users and groups from CSV. Why might we do this? Well, simply, you might have one-to-one -one devices and shared devices or common devices that live in a, a trolley of 30 iPads here and there, for example. Now, there are reasons why to give these iPads identities as well uh, for management to make it super easy. Um, but what you probably don't want to do is create trolley one, iPad one, trolley one, iPad two, etc. in your LDAP service. They're just users that aren't really proper users so why would you create them to sync them across when you could just import those users directly into jump school and manage them in the location that makes sense of course then when we sync with um, apple school manager it augments the correct users so again these other users that are for these common devices generally speaking don't need an apple id because it's not doesn't belong to a single person it's just a general device um, so we can really start to bring in multiple sources and create this kind of ultimate directory or this ultimate configuration in Jamf School. That, of course, gives us all of the information that we need to be able to create our device smart groups for automation and create zero uh, touch workflows should we need to. And of course, with authentication being Azure as well, when the user tries to authenticate, they do. Jamf School will automatically know what year group they're in, so therefore what configurations and applications they need, and configure the device accordingly. So you could give anybody, uh, on a, in a one-to-one -one situation, for example, any iPad straight from the box, completely in their wrapper still, knowing full well that when they turn that device on and authenticate, they'll get the exact configuration that they need. You, you don't need to do that as IT before handing that out. So when it comes to identity in Jamf School, these are the four things that you need to remember. Synchronization is key to bringing in uh, users and their user groups so that we can start to build out some automation. Authentication will give us the ability to have that live link to current passwords in our identity providers such as Google and Azure. If we're going to use School Manager as well, and we've spent the time to create classes, etc., in there, when we do the synchronization and the import into Jamf School, it's super important that we match the users to the synced users that we have from our LDAP service so that we create one augmented user rather than two separate ones. And finally, don't forget, we can import data independently of the sync for those kind of ad hoc users or those kind of users that you don't really need to be managed elsewhere in your other directory. And of course, you can always use the import to create all of your users in Jamf School if you want to, to bypass completely the use of an LDAP server or your cloud identity providers. It's all there for you to be able to use the best way for, possible for you. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time today um, and I hope to see you soon.